to this series of videos on importing and exporting data in REDCap. My name is Fred Lapola, and I'm a librarian with the NYU Health Sciences Library. And in the next few videos, we're going to talk about the import and export features of REDCap. So jumping ahead, so in addition to being able to pull out our data or collect data in a survey or form, we're also able to bulk upload data into REDCap using a CSV spreadsheet. When REDCap was originally designed, part of the thinking in its how it was designed would be that there would be multiple, that it would have the functionality for multiple site studies where each site is blinded to one another's results, and then they could share data with a central hub by sending a file of data collected from each of their respective sites to that hub. So using REDCap's data import tool, we're able to bulk upload using spreadsheets, though it does require us to format the data in the format of our REDCap project. I'm gonna jump over to REDCap to show how this is done. So if I was to go into a given project, click back to project setup, we can see we've got a pre-built questionnaire. We've got a uh, nacho craving index survey, as well as the happiness survey uh, from the session on building forms quickly. Over here on this left-hand menu under Applications, we have the Data Import Tool. If you're on a project and you're not seeing that import tool, you will need to go to User Rights to gain access to it or request whoever uh, the project manager provide you with the User Rights to access the Data Import Tool. When I click here, I can go down to download my data import template in either columns or rows. And this is a pre-formatted spreadsheet providing us with space to copy and paste all of the data for our uh, data import. So I'm going to go ahead and go with rows. And when I open it up, we can see that it has, if I make this a little bit larger, the name of each variable as a row at the header, and then open space for me to copy and paste the relevant data in. So we could imagine if we had collaborators at a different site and wanted them to share their data with us, and we were acting as the data hub, they would send over their data file and we could copy and paste it into this import template for upload. I've already got a pre-filled out data import template over here. It's not 100% filled out, but we can see the same, make this a little larger, the same variable names. And then going over the complete or not, we'll see is this one, make this a little wider just so we can see, form complete mark this one as two, and this one I've left as incomplete. An important detail to be aware of is for providing values to our project, we will need to use the raw code values, not the text labels. And a great resource to be aware of for uploading data using the bulk import tool is the codebook. So over here on this left menu, we have an option for the codebook. This is a great tool to be aware of for providing the human readable understanding of what the different values in our project mean. So here we can see, for example, have you ever eaten nachos can be coded as one or zero. And so having a resource guide to be able to come back and remember what does a one mean? What does a zero mean? Especially for multiple choice options where it might not be super intuitive later on what the one through six relates to. So what we can do in the case of the data import tool is refer to this page and then see, okay, for a given value, I need a one or zero to reflect the values needed. Some of them will be free text and we are able to type in free text, though they may also have validation values. And going down, we can see the various options. We can see for the complete values, they can be zero, one, or two. And for those of you who work with the record status dashboard, that will mean that the record will appear as red, yellow, or green for a given form. So I've got my pre-filled out form over here. I have to make sure it's saved. Again, it's always going to save as a CSV file. REDCap always works with CSV files. So if we have any sort of formatting or any sort of functions built into our Excel spreadsheet, we will lose those when we save as a CSV. We'll just save the value in each cell. Going back to data import tool, we can check, are they in rows versus columns, which is up here. If there are any dates, which date format? An important feature, typically we are going to want to leave 
allow blank values to overwrite existing values as no ignore blank values. Otherwise, what will happen is, let's say we had data in our project already. Here we've left, I've left these blank uh, partially or completely out of just convenience to myself, as well as this entire form. If we had already collected data for these forms, if we change this from no to yes, it will overwrite any collected data as blank. Whereas if we leave it as no, ignore blank values, it will sort of mesh up against the data. So if we had, for example, already uploaded data for one form, and then we were receiving a second form's worth of data for a given set of records, if we leave this as no, we're able to mesh them next to each other without worrying about overwriting. We also have the option to auto rename all records. So if our collaborators in a different site send us a, a batch of records and theirs are labeled say 100 to 200, but our, uh, our main hub database has 700 records in it. If we change this to yes, it will auto number to start the new records at the end of the, uh, of the data of the database that we're adding it to. And then we can just leave delimiter as is. So I'll hit browse. There it is, an upload file. Let's find out where the errors are. Fortunately for me, there were no errors. And we can see it gives us a lengthy table, in this case, not that lengthy since it's not so many records, of all of the data that we're adding to our project. So I can look it over, see that it makes sense, and then say import data. It's very important to always scroll to the bottom and remember to click import data, otherwise the changes won't be saved. And now we can go to the record status dashboard and sure enough, those that were marked zero for complete are still red, nothing's filled out, and then the rest are green. It's always important when we are working with the data import tool that every record, every row that we're filling out have a record ID and that it be filled out to the best of our ability. If this row continues too far or more, so if this row does not extend far enough and we have records down below, it will likely give us an error Similarly, we'll also likely get an error if any of the values we've included are outside of the allowable range. In the next video, we're going to talk about the data export features that come with RedCap.